The secret to prototyping quickly in Dexterous is these layouts. You can think of a layout as a visual template. So here's an example here. This visual template is a fantasy card. I've got different areas on the cards. We call them zones. And here's a text for a title. There's an image, there's defense value, there's an ability, which is just text. There's an attack value again. These elements of the card, these zones, will change from card to card. So you can imagine another card in this deck might have a wizard picture, might have a different title, might have less attack, less defense, and the ability might be text for a fireball spell instead. So how do we make a layout in Dexterous and how do we get it to create different cards for us? Well, let me show you how. In Dexterous on the Layouts tab here, you can make a layout from scratch, but I'm just gonna show you how to make, how to use one of the default layouts here. So I'm gonna click more layout templates. I've got an idea for a game that's a fantasy role game, and I'm gonna click this one here. I'm gonna save this layout, save it to my layouts. Now, if I tuck this, these layouts back up, you can see that I've now got this layout here, this visual template added to my layouts. I'm gonna click on this layout, and I'm now in the layout editor, so I can move things around if I want to. These here are different zones on the card like we saw before with the other example. And this is here, the different zones over here, this is their names. So this power is actually this number here. I can actually drag it around. I'm gonna actually reposition the shield over here. I'm gonna make a little change. I'm gonna put this power number on top of it. I'm gonna change the font to a more fantasy-esque font. I'm gonna click these zones as well. I'm gonna change these fonts. I'm just showing you here that you can actually change the default layouts. Just because they're default doesn't mean that you can't change them in any way that you want. So I'm just gonna grab that same font. Now I'm gonna save and close. With those changes to the layout, I'm now ready to actually make some cards. So I'm gonna click projects. Here's my project screen. I've already got one here, but I'm gonna create a new one just to show you how it works. So create project. I'm gonna give this project a title, so fantasy project. And now I'm gonna add a component. A component is like a tile, a token, some cards. So I wanna make some cards. So I'm gonna click add a component with an existing layout because we've already got one good to go. And I'm gonna click this tick here to connect this layout to this component. I'm gonna double click here and just name this my fantasy characters, and I can add new ones here with different with different layouts as well. But essentially, the thing to note here is that I'm now in the project editor, and I can create new cards super quickly. If I hit this plus icon over here, I can add new cards, and you'll see that these are the default Royal Assassin cards here with these values. But what's this table down below? This table is actually the zones. So you can see here we've got the power here, so if I change that to three or to a two, you can see that that actually updates over here. I can zoom in just to show you a bit more clearly what's going on. So if I click this zone here, I can update that to a three, to a four, to a five, and so on. So you can see that each of these zones is linked to a cell in the table. So I can change the description here super easily and it will all update in real time. That's all very well, but they all look the same. How do we make them look different? So what we can do now is we can head over to the images tab and I'm going to search for some default images. You can upload your own, of course. I'm just going to move my own face out of the way. I'm going to create a new folder here. I'm going to select it. I'm going to call it fantasy roles. And now in these um, default images up here, I'm going to search for fantasy. I'm actually going to lock that tag so that I can now search for some another tag as well. I'm going to search for fantasy and characters. So this is going to give me all the all the images that are tagged with fantasy and also characters. I'm going to go into my fantasy roles folder. I can just double click these to grab the ones I want. Okay, I've got some ones that I want now. Now I'm going to head back to my project. And now if you look here at this image zone, so it's selected there, I can just click this little icon, this image icon. I can go into my fantasy roles and now I can just switch out that image. And what's really cool is it's super quick to just go along and switch these out for different images. So once, you, once you've once you done that, you can go along and you can change the data for each of these cards. Um, you'll be ready 
to print. So how would you go about printing? Um, what you can do is you can ex you can hit this export up the top. Before I do that, I'm actually just going to show you something here. You can just click this number if I want to dial up the copies of the cards. If I want four of this one, I want two of this one, three of this one, for example. When you've got the cards looking how you want, you're ready to export. So you can go up here to the top right, click export, and that will take you to a page. It's A4 by default. You can change that right here in the page setup. You can click the export up here in the top right and you can print to PDF or generate PNG images or create a tabletop simulator file for these cards. So that's how quick and easy it is to prototype a new game idea with one of the dexterous default layouts.